The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everybody, and welcome today to today's webinar. It's Securing Networks with Machine Learning and DNS Analytics. Uh, I just want to do a quick sound check. Let me know if everybody can hear me okay. Is that a yes? I want to make sure. All right, I think we're good to go. I got a bunch of sounds good. Uh, I don't know if my video is working. I think it's working. Um, and I think we're good to go. And um, I'm really excited. I hope everybody uh, is, first of all, safe um, and uh, secure during this time. I know we're, a lot of us are in lock-in mode right now uh, with the whole COVID-19. I know internally in our office, we only have one staff member a day going in. So a lot of us are adapting to work from home and we're making those adjustments. But I do want to thank uh, the, the right now I see hundreds of people connected and more signing in. Um, so it's great to see everybody. Uh, it's great to uh, see everybody still part of their community. People are still getting things done and we're excited to have this. This is something that we've been working on for a long time. So um, once again, my name is Stephen Job, I'm the president and founder of DNS Made Easy and Constellix. And uh, part of the webinar today is also going to be Rob Phillip. Um, he's our chief scientific officer here. And Rob has been instrumental in getting a lot of the traffic anomaly um, features put into DNS Made Easy and Constellix. And this is something that it's actually been years in work. And to put us as the leader in the industry and in what we're doing, if you know a little bit about our company, if you know a little bit about me, um, we're heavily focused on engineering, we're heavily focused on infrastructure, we're heavily focused on analytics, we're heavily focused on providing value and services to our end users. That's one thing that we really try to do well. And so this is something that we are uh, really excited about uh, in, in offering this. This is one more uh, tool that we are going to be able to offer and be first in the industry. Uh, 19 years ago, when DNS Made Easy came out, we were one of the first in the industry to do failover a certain way. Uh, we were the first to do IP Anycast at a cost-effective model. We were the first to offer certain uh, additional features when it comes to statistics and real-time logging that we talked about. And that's one thing about our company is that we're kind of leading the industry. We're not waiting for other people to make decisions on what we do. We are actually uh, driving the, the market. And so first, I want to talk about who we are. Uh, we're going to, this is our webinar agenda. We're going to talk about our timeline of how we got here. We're going to talk about the features we, we've had for a few years now, which is the real-time statistics and the analytics and real-time logs. We're going to talk about the business case and the use case. And why do we want this? Why do you want uh, AI ML? Why do you want artificial intelligence machine learning? And why do you want this to be used in your DNS traffic? We're going to talk about what we currently offer with our real-time traffic anomaly detection. Uh, we're going to have a little bit of our current future research and development. And we're going to have a questions and answer section. And then we got a gift, right? And you got to stay to the end. We can't give the gift in the beginning because I'm in the house here with my three children. If I gave the gift in the beginning, I'd give it to them. They'd all leave. So we're going to uh, force everyone to stay to the end to be part of this gift. And we're excited to offer it to everybody as a great way to use this feature for free, test it out, see how you like it. Um, and so all current DNS, Meanesi, and Constellix clients, uh, you got to stay till number eight today, which you get to get the great gift at the end. So real quickly, who are we? Um, so back in 2001, I founded DNS Made Easy, and it was kind of a, a one-person shop for a few years. And we slowly started adding staff, uh, luckily. And then a lot of our staff from the original days are still with us today. Uh, and now we're going on about year 19, going on year 20. And uh, we're really, we're, we're a proven industry leader. We have the highest uptime in the industry. People have used us. And market-wise, we have the greatest, uh, some of the best speeds and performance at all times. 
In 2017, we launched Constellix, and we actually had it going for about a year and a half before that, but it was beta and it was a free service. In 2017, we launched it as a paid service, and so now we're going on about three years with that product. We currently process over 100 billion queries per day. Um, that's a lot of DNS traffic relatively to most other DNS providers. Um, we have over 18 POPs. More coming soon, a little bit of a delay with uh, the whole COVID-19. Uh, a little bit of a delay. We're moving into parts of South Africa and, and India, and we're kind of a little bit of a delay on that part. But one thing that really separates us, and this is something that says, what do you take the most pride in in offering your service? And it's kind of what do we value as a company? And so when we started offering DNS services, I said, you know what, we're going to focus on the network, right? We're not going to be a, a DNS provider that just runs services on someone else's network, right? We're going to focus on the network. And you think about it, I usually have this analogy when I talk to people of opening up a restaurant, right? And if you wanted to open a restaurant, you want to offer something really unique, you don't buy the same prepackaged burger that everyone else would buy, you're right? You take your own cuts of meat and your own cuts of whatever, and you make a really unique ingredient. Um, or if you're doing a vegetarian restaurant, right? I don't want to be uh, against any of the vegans on, online. but when it comes to DNS and it comes to offering internet infrastructure and, and internet infrastructure as a service, um, software as a service, our core part is our network, right? And that's where we really take pride in is our network. We don't cheap out on it. We own everything from layer one to layer seven, right? So we have our own routers and all of our different pops. We own our own switches. We own our own cables. We own our own name servers. We're not piggybacking off of anything else. And that's why we've been able to maintain such a high redundancy and a high uptime in, overall in the industry. Um, our AS is 16552. You can look at it and see where we're currently peered and everything. And that where we get, that's really what's going to be powering a lot of the decisions we're doing in DNS over the next few years. And then if you look at what else we've done recently in their Constellix Sonar product, we actually are gathering metrics and measurements on performance. So currently we're currently, uh, we're currently gathering over 1 billion measurements per day. So we got over 100 billion DNS queries. We're gathering right now over a billion DNS measurements in Constellix Sonar. We're going to be putting that all in together to giving people better security and better products and services, right? And how did this all start? Well, you know, we launched DNS Made Easy in 2001, 2002, 2003, and it was growing. And around 2010, we had a whole rise in DDoS attacks. And it was, I'm not talking a small rise, I'm talking a mammoth rise in DDoS attacks. There was about a two month period where we suffered over 45 large DDoS attacks. And the reason why, what we found out, uh, uh, I won't name the companies at this time, but a lot of the DDoS vendors were actually rebranding our name servers behind the scenes, right? They didn't want to offer their own DNS infrastructure. They rebranded DNS Made Easy at the time. And we were just serving all of this DDoS traffic and we were fighting DDoS attacks for DDoS providers. But it required us to learn how to build a network properly, how to be resilient for during DDoS attacks and how to understand DDoS attacks. But during also this time, you know, it's we're trying to figure out, OK, why are we getting attacked? Right. What's happening? Where are we getting these spikes? Which pop? You know, and at the time when you're running an IP Anycast DNS network, I don't want to get into what that is too much right now, but pretty much to summarize it is you're having the same name servers answer for traffic in multiple locations around the world. And you want to keep that as regional as possible. And I've done other webinars about how we do that so well and why we specialize in it. But when you're having traffic that's now being, you know, segmented here and here in, in Europe and United States and, and in Asia Pacific and Oceania and now South, you know, South America and you see traffic going to these regions, what's getting attacked and how's it getting attacked? And we had to learn from this really fast. Okay, what's getting attacked? How do we mitigate it? How do we solve it? And there was no solution out there, right? There's no third party tool that we could have used to say, how are we going to understand uh, when this is getting attacked, right? You look at the current monitoring solutions and they were just not cost prohibitive, right? DNS made easy, unlike our competitors, we don't have 30 or 60 name servers. We have hundreds and actually thousands of name servers now, depending upon what grouping of name servers you're on, all around the world. And to monitor each one of these name servers in almost in near real time was cost prohibitive to pay another company to do it. So we had to develop our own tools in-house to do all this. So in 2014, we had the idea, like, you know, we have 
all these analytics, let's start giving this to the user, right? And we developed these analytics and we, we thought, like, let's start giving the data and tools we designed to monitor our own name servers and start providing this um, to be leading the industry, right? Once again, we're going to try to be a leader in the industry. And in 2015, um, we came up with real-time statistics, right? Uh, users that I want to now have more information than ever before. So what we did is we came up and uh, Rob's on the, uh, uh, the meeting as well. And Rob's actually one of the architects uh, or our main architect throughout this whole entire process is to understand how do we, and at the time we weren't doing 100 billion queries, right? We're roughly at the 45, 50 billion query mark. How do you take 45, 50 billion queries and correctly count each single one for every single user, right? It's not a simple task, right? It's not simple like, you know, you're, you're a couple hundred. How do you do 45 and, and how do you trick, how do you correctly monitor the 10 that this user gets and the 1 billion this user gets without leaking information from one to the other? There was a point where our staff, when we were troubleshooting statistics for users, they would say, what domain's getting all these queries? And there was nothing more we did than we would log into the name server, uh, turn on TCP dump, and we would filter out the traffic for their domain. And that was what our staff would do at one point. And we realized that was not cost prohibitive for us, the troubleshooting where the records were coming from. So we developed real-time statistics. And real-time statistics is a tool that allowed users um, to get this information. This kind of shows you a graph and we'll talk about that in a little bit. In 2017, we said we now want to provide more insight to our users and we want to give more data to our users than ever before. So we came up with real-time analytics and logging, right? So now it's about three years ago where we're now showing still the first in the industry to do this. No one's, no one's been able to copy us at this point yet. And what we're doing here is we're actually now allowing people to see their queries in real time, know exactly who's making that query from where, where is it coming from, giving you all this data. Um, it, it's pretty monumental when you think about running this across thousands of name servers and how we're able to do all this. Um, and this shows you kind of how we, we, we do it. If you look here, we do have the ability to do, uh, we give you like a top, uh, any of my, uh, uh, my Linux boys in the house or, or, or Unix uh, boys and girls in the house that love looking at top and looking at my top resources and records. We, we copied that really well. And um, Rob was a great, part of engineering that process um, throughout this. And then this kind of shows how we also will show you in real time where your traffic's coming from. Uh, so this is a graph that kind of shows that. So in 2019, we now are finally at the point where we're saying, all right, we have all this data. We've learned how to gather this data properly. We're years of experience of gathering this data. Now, how do we start making alerts and how do we start informing the data users when the data changes, right? And that's the really great part about this. Uh, and then here we are today, uh, we're now offering it to the public and it's something that's been out for a couple of months now. And uh, due to the COVID and everything like that, been a little delayed getting this webinar out, but we're excited to do the webinar from home for everybody. So we hope you're all enjoying your afternoon or morning or evening. So real, quick, uh, real quickly right now, I wanna know, um, of the people online, uh, how many are using uh, DNS Made Easy? How many are using Constellix? How many are using both? Or how many are using none? Uh, uh, do a quick little uh, poll out there to let me know what the, um, what the feedback is. And just so everyone knows, when you're filling out these polls, uh, we are going to be doing webinars once every week. Next week, we're going to be doing a webinar actually on working virtually, remote, and we actually have a, a group of panelists joining us. So it's not just going to be myself and Rob talking. Um, we're going to have some, we'll call them industry experts in the community. They'll be working with us on how the challenges of working remote is. It'd be sort of, you know, two, two and a half, three weeks after the lockdown started to see how we're all adapting to it. Um, and we'll be pushing out information. We are doing a, a following webinar a week after that about multi CDNs and, and configurations and stuff. And then we're doing a webinar every single week. So it will be every week, Thursday at two o'clock uh, p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Western. Um, and we look to be doing that 
uh, throughout this whole entire uh, this, this pandemic. And then we may be continuing it as well. Uh, we'll see the, the interest. And so far, we're really excited with the, the level of uh, responses we're getting. All right, let me close the poll, share the results. Uh, what do we have here? So we have 67% uh, on DNS made easy, 5% uh, on Constellix, 12% are using both. And there's reasons why you may want to use both. And there's 16% for uh, none at all. So that's great. Great. We have a good combination, mostly DNS made easy. Of course, that makes sense. Uh, DNS made easy is currently serving over 40,000 different organizations, over a million domain names. Constellix uh, actually catching up in, in, in queries but very low on the, on the organization's level. We're not nearly the size of the 40,000 different companies that use DNS Made Easy. Um, and then we have a bunch of people who don't use either or any of them, and that's good to see as well. Uh, welcome, and we hope to uh, have you join the family soon. So what we have um, here is uh, we then went to the, and we, we and like I'm saying, in 2020, we did now offer this to the public. And this is going to show you real quickly what the real-time traffic anomaly detection is. Um, and this is just an email capture. And we're going to talk more about this in a little bit. So let's high and step. Let's go back and let's talk about, okay, what do we do? What, what, what is providing analytics to the people give us, right, uh, and to our clients? And so what real-time statistics does is allows uh, people that care about their DNS data, which should be everybody. Everybody should have someone in your organization that cares about your DNS data. DNS powers everything within your network. Right? If you don't have DNS, you're not going to get people to your website. No one's going to send you an email. Uh, your internal systems are likely not going to communicate properly. So the real-time statistics was the first in the industry to allow you to query which record type is being queried, what's the record name, where it's being queried, the IP version, the protocols, the eDNS client subnet queries if it's applicable. Obviously, that's more applicable for our Constellix product than our DNS Made Easy product. And that was really, that's groundbreaking in the time and not, I don't think, I think if I know one other company in existence that even offers that sort of analytics for your for your data. And it's good to have that data so you can understand what's the transition, right? A lot of times people don't even realize they have so many IPv6 lookups going for their domain name. And they're like, I don't even have an IPv6 version of my website. It's not even on an IPv6 network. I can't even serve it. And once they see this and they see these number of IPv6 queries, they say, okay, it's time for us to actually get uh, a bandwidth provider that we can get IPv6 or a web host that can do IPv6. And, or I'm seeing, oh, look at all these random queries to a particular record, right? Is something misconfigured? And this was the first tool in existence to do that. The real-time logging took it a step further, right? We now can see actually who's querying you. And you can see this re in real time. What resolving name server is querying you? What is it asking for, right? So when someone's on the Google and using uh, you know, Google DNS and they're making that query to the 8.8.8.8, .8 what are they passing in? Is it passing eDNS client subnet information? Where's the query coming from? How is it being asked? Giving you all that information to really let you fine tune your DNS um, rule set, right? And that's the thing. DNS isn't as simple as, okay, this is the IP address for my name anymore, right? It's so It could be so much more complicated. We have rules within Constellix that go all the way down to, okay, this is my rule coming from this network, coming from this region, right? And those are sort of the things we're doing in Constellix. We're making those decisions for you on the fly constantly. So when you're developing these own rules and you were putting your own rule engine in there, you're going to need to understand exactly what each query is, where it's coming from, what they're passing in, and why we're making that decision. Um, and that's what the analytics and the real-time logging really does push forward to you, is it gives you those, anal those, those tools to do that. So uh, that was a huge part that we did three years ago. And then we started saying, once we had this capability of looking at the traffic in real time, now we started idea of how to bucket it and make decisions on it. So what we then want to talk about real quickly is over the 20 years, right? Uh, users have always asked us, hey, I'm getting a spike in queries. This is something I need to be alerted of, right? And so what I did is I quickly went back through 20 years of tickets. Uh, I went through our old support system and our new support system because we migrated a few months ago. And I just I did a search for query spikes, right? And there were thousands and thousands of tickets, right? So these are people who had anything from um, a small thing, and I'm just curious about why, 
all the way down to, okay, we had suffered an outage. We're a large company, right? We have several hundred employees. This just cost us tens of thousands of dollars, if not more, right? We did a, oh, I don't want to ruin all my use cases. So let me just get to it. So highest one is DDoS attacks, right? Often before a DDoS attack, the DNS pattern for a domain is severely impacted, right? You're going to start seeing random queries generated for your host name, and you're going to see this spiking, and you're going to see it in little tiny pockets at times. And this is something that usually people are losing, doing to try to figure out what's in your domain space, right? Can we filter it here? Or can we send a few packets here? Can we send something here? You know, um, uh, the RTTAD is real-time traffic anomaly detection. Everything needs an acronym inside of the computer industry. If you don't have an acronym, you're not cool. So we're going to call it what's Todd um, at the current moment. And so when we're thinking about the real-time traffic anomaly detection, uh, these were the, the things. And so when people were getting DDoS attack and they look back at their, um, they had an attack and they look back at their real-time statistics and they noticed that there was a spike here and there was another spike here in this region and another spike here in this region. and then there was an attack right against their, their web server infrastructure, right? Interesting to know, right? Look at this. These attacks are precursors to their things. These attacks cost them money, right? Spam attacks, right? Someone takes your domain name and someone starts sending out millions and millions and millions of emails based on your domain name. Okay, what does that do for you? Number one, right? It's probably gonna get you blacklisted, right? even if you do all this other stuff, because a lot of mail servers don't properly take care of that. They're just gonna say, okay, I'm getting all this spam. I'm gonna start blocking you and start blocking you on content, right? So what we found, this is less likely now, but something that's still pretty, it happens, we get a ticket in about, I've looked and it's averaging about once every, uh, probably two weeks at this point. It used to be once every, almost every day uh, years ago and, and spam detection has been a lot better. But think about it, someone sends out an email on, based on your domain name there's going to be MX records done and TXT record lookups automatically done for your domain every time an email goes out, right? The receiving email server has to do all this. Does it have an SPF? Does it have a DKIM, DKIM, uh, a DKIM, DKIM record? Uh, does it have all this other sender verification policies put in place? Is it being configured properly? So if you see a, a, an immediate increase in MX and TXT records, it could be someone sending out spam for your domain. Configuration problems, right? Number three, when an internal system is configured incorrectly, you could have millions of more or less records than expected, right? You have your own internal DNA, uh, network and these systems are all talking to each other to provide your users a service that you need to give them, right? We all have our own users. We all have clients that you have to provide value for. Now, if you've got systems internally that need, to, uh, that need to communicate with each other and if they start, they can't communicate with each other and if their queries then exceed up, or drop down significantly, you know there's a problem. So this can immediately identify configuration problems. Server issues, a server is now down inside your internal network, right? And now people are trying to reach out to it and that server is not then making any requests. So sometimes even if you have stuff locked within your network that you don't allow external monitoring to go into and you don't have something configured to monitor that server properly, we've seen a lot of tickets in the past where saying, hey, my, my queries have gone down is because this server was not actually work functioning properly. And then marketing mistakes. Believe it or not, people spend hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars in sales and marketing. Right? I know there's people on the phone right now that whole purpose is to increase revenue for your domain, to increase revenue for your company, right? And everything is tied to your brand and giving your brand an image and reliability and all that is your utmost importance thing, right? So when there's a mistake in a marketing and you put the wrong, the wrong URL, the wrong name or something is done incorrectly and you now spent 20, 50, 60, $100,000 in marketing for your monthly budget, and it's wasted, wouldn't it be nice to actually have a service that kind of could identify that in advance, right? If it could be identified through DNS. And that's what the real-time traffic anomaly detection can do for you, right? And so marketing mistakes, believe it or not, do hit number five for the most often requested, how the heck am I getting so many queries right now for my domain name? And what it usually is, is all right, they're all hitting a URL, right? Marketing is sending people to this particular FQDN for my website that doesn't even exist, right? And that kind of backfires on them. 
Um, and so what immediately can happen if this is alerted, uh, administrators can be uh, shown uh, this and they automatically can make any changes. So those are the top five use cases. There's probably 105 more I could have picked from, but these five were by far uh, the, most pre uh, the, most con uh, the most prevalent uh, in our support tickets over the past 18 years. So now let's actually talk about real-time traffic anomaly detection, right? Um, where are we? Um, what does it do? How does it look? Uh, and everything. So I'm going to get into this right here. Um, so for right now, uh, and I do have one more question uh, that we're going to go into just to keep it a little more interactive. Uh, and so the question is, um, have you ever experienced an unknown query spikes for your domain? Right. So if you are on the IT side uh, for your domain, and if you have ever noticed a spike in the query anomalies, I'm just curious, based upon the people on the phone call, okay, uh, have you ever noticed this? And is this something that you, you, you could potentially use? Now, this could backfire. If everyone says no, then really there's no market for this product that we've been created for four years, and that's depressing, but I don't think that's gonna happen. Um, most people uh, have seen this if they ever do a look at their traffic and they, it, it kind of will pop in um, from time. If I was smart, I'd look at the poll and close it right when I feel like the numbers are working for my advantage. But I'm not. I'm going to be honest, and I'll let you all go through this, this process right here. All right. I think that's good enough. Uh, the poll has been open for a minute. Um, if you haven't answered it by now, chances are you have uh, stepped away from your computer and you've done something around the house during this crisis. Uh, so let's close this and share the results. So uh, we have 63% say yes. Wow, okay, that's good, that's good. So hey, two thirds of you, we have a product to actually alert you of this. Um, the other 38%, the sales side of me will say, it's gonna happen to you someday. You know, the engineering side of me, which is kind of where I am, is gonna say, well, it could happen to you someday, but if it hasn't happened yet, it might not happen, but let's go with the sales side. There's a reason to actually want this. And we talked about those use cases to kind of give you that extra insight. Um, all right, so we're gonna hide these results and I'm gonna go. So real-time traffic anomaly detection. What we do is we provided uh, a dashboard where you can actually go and configure this, right? And we also then provide alerting and monitoring to alert you whenever this happens. So what you see on the left-hand side of your screen right here is an alert that would come up in an email. And you can see how there's a, a machine learning algorithm that's done. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. And as the machine algorithm is done, it, when, when you leave outside those bounds, it will alert you and send you an email notification. And on that email, it gives you a link to get into the analytics tools that we provide to actually let you go in and troubleshoot this. So what I wanna do real quickly is see if I could actually bring up, uh, oop, let me go back. Um, you can look at my uh, wonderful desktop. And what I want to do is actually log into our analytics tool and show it to you in real time. And I'm gonna ask all my personal friends on that phone call to not be uh, uh, sending me uh, messages. So I'm gonna close off all my LinkedIn's and everything now, otherwise uh, <laughs> I have some, I have some very uh, humorous friends that wouldn't have fun doing that. Let me log into a portal. So this is our analytics engine uh, that you log into. And this, I'm looking through it on the, uh, the Constellix. It's the same if you look logged into your DNS Made Easy uh, analytics or if you logged into your Constellix analytics. It would be the exact same thing. And what you can do here is this is where you would obviously go into your real-time uh, uh, logging and, and more statistics. This shows all the pops, which we have our, our servers. And you can then turn on you know individual per pop logging if you wanted to and but what i want to show here is we now have added a new feature called anomaly and within the anomaly 
it allows you to, and this is something I just turned on yesterday for this domain, it starts building and the longer, and, and Rob, you may correct me at any time, but the longer it actually is learning your traffic and it's doing fits on your traffic, the better it's actually gonna get in predicting where your traffic should be. So what you're seeing here is a straight line. That's just because that's where the machine's uh, expecting it to be, but you can tell how the traffic actually is changing. Well, if I actually look at the, the traffic for this domain uh, throughout the, de the, 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 uh, the day, uh, actually, let me log into uh, our. Uh, I, I gotta click on the other tab, and then it will show you the data instead. Hold on, I gotta I gotta fix one thing here. On um, all right, what I, what do you want me to do? Click, click on, on that. The tab, then you can oh, see the data. Exactly, perfect. So what this is actually going to show you is where the actual traffic was for the domain as it's learning. And so this is when I turned it on. And Rob ex uh, explained if I'm, I'm wrong. This is actually where it, it would have predicted it, it would have been, correct? Um, so the, the solid line is the actual data. That's your actual query counts. And then the shaded region is a model, the model prediction. Model, the modeling fit, exactly. So this is where I turned the modeling fit on yesterday. Um, and you're going to tell if I go into uh, my real-time stats for this domain. Uh, let me just roll up everything. Right. It's actually, it's pretty, it's pretty smooth. It's not too uh, abnormal throughout the day. And so this is actually going to match uh, what we're seeing here in the real-time um, traffic. This domain does not get a lot of traffic. You can tell where it's expected to get traffic. And... What we allow you to do is when you enable this is that we allow you to do a fit either on, uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. We allow you to do fits based upon a region, based upon the world, or based upon a per pop. And we'll talk about the reasons to doing all those uh, a little bit. And all we have to do here is just turn this on. So I wanted to turn it on for this domain. And then uh, I pick the, the, re the one I want to turn it on to, let's say I want to turn it, and you can choose how I want this aggregated. So I want this aggregated by region or aggregated by city. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, so I get to say save, and now uh, it's automatically automatically learning and it's automatically detecting if there's any anomalies. And uh, you know, over here in the contacts is where you'd add all your different contacts that you wanna be notified, right? So that's kind of shows you how easy it is to kind of set this up. Um, and this kind of shows you where the fits are done and it gives you an execution point. Um, it shows you how for the, the server.us, which is my big demo uh, domain, we're doing it on the world view uh, and the different, uh, the different model that we're applying this to. And this could tell I've only had it on for not even a full day and I got 42 fits already. So uh, that's about 21 hours of, of modeling that's being done for this. And when it does leave, um, you know, I probably should log into one that actually shows an anomaly. I think I have that in a screen capture. But if we go back into here, and if it does leave an anomaly, you're actually going to see it, the whole part get highlighted. And so it's going to send you an email, and you're going to get the anomaly detection. It's going to show it to you in the logs, in the reports. And let me go back to this. And so uh, I think I have one uh, and I'll bring that up later on if I need to. So this is gonna tell you kind of what we're doing with the real-time traffic anomaly detection. We are actually doing machine learning and machine learning uses an algorithm and models that perform specific tasks, right? And this is something that's, you know, it's something that you're not going to be having someone manually look at your domain every single half hour to determine is it in or outside of bounds. But you actually want to choose something that actually is going to figure out is it in the expected model, right? So we're currently using the Rob. How do you say is that Fourier Arima or is it Fourier? Yeah, Fourier Arima. Fourier Arima, and it's doing a short-term autoregressive error correctioning model using our dynamic fitting. Right. And so what this does is basically is dynamically selecting the best model out of a range of models that represents your data. So there's all these different models that could be used to represent. But every domain is a little bit different. Right. Everyone's business case is a little bit different. 
So what we're gonna choose is the best model out of the set of models that represents your data. And currently we're doing a fit every 30 minutes, right? And we're gonna be based upon what the model has learned uh, we're, and the data is gonna determine what traffic lies outside of the expected trends. And if it leaves the expected trends, right? That's when it starts sending you these emails, right? Uh, you're gonna send you an email like you see here on the left-hand side where you're exceeding it. And then on the right-hand side, you're gonna see these all alerts going off, right? And, and these dark uh, orange uh, anomalies. And I actually have one, let me go. Um, I want to show one that actually has an anomaly on the screen. There it is. All right. So if you look at this screen here, you can tell how uh, we put it on for our, our one domain, our DNS made easy. And you can tell that within a region, when we start seeing an anomaly or detection, right? And you can see how you can see, you notice where the, uh, the, the dark orange lights up. So this gives you a historical view of your anomalies. This is turned on at a region level. So one, two, three, four, five, six different regions here. Um, and so based upon these regions, we're automatically going to see, okay, within a region, we have less queries than what the, uh, the Fourier or Rima model has predicted. Um, and then it sends us an email. We then look into it and we can say, okay, the reason why it's an attack, oh, we dropped announcements, right? We, there's things that we actually do to actually cause this. And there's actually things we did to test this. Um, so that's kind of what it looks like. Um, all right, let me get back to my keynote. So, and those are the fits that are done every 30 minutes. Uh, we then make that decision and then we determine what is an anomaly and we alert you on it. Really, and for these business cases here, it's perfect, right? You're now gonna be in the loop. Something that never before in the industry has anyone ever done is to give you these analytics, give you the logging, give you the statistics, and now give you the alerts when your traffic is changing based upon machine learning, uh, which is unbelievable. Um, and so really quickly regarding this, um, of the people on the poll, and now this is something that a lot of our, uh, some of our competitors uh, kind of do to people, but they sometimes ask, uh, and they use this as a scare tactic, is has your domain ever been under attack? So has your domain or organization ever suffered an attack uh, that you know of that you needed to do some sort of uh, DDoS mitigation on? And I'm just curious, so the people who are paying pretension on the poll, um, how many have suffered a, a DDoS attack? Can I give this a few more seconds? So if everyone's got time next Thursday, please uh, come back and join us at the two o'clock webinar. Uh, we'd enjoy to see you all again. All right, I'm gonna close this poll off now. And let's share the results. And uh, as I expected, right? 39% um, have, a lot of people are probably on this just because they have received attacks before, 61% no, right? So not every domain does get attacked. Um, Unfortunately, because we do offer DNS for a million domain names, when our clients get attacked, we usually get attacked. Um, so, uh, you know, we, we suffer attacks uh, now with our infrastructure. Uh, most attacks we don't even get alerted on anymore, uh, luckily, because they're small enough. And anything of any significant size, we're still all alerted on and we still have to take care of. All right. And one thing I wanted to, I'm actually curious about, and maybe because artificial intelligence machine learning is is big are any of you currently using any ai ml in any other parts of your industry uh for your domain in marketing and security and sales uh sometimes uh people can use the new ai stuff in learning how customers respond to emails right for the sales cycle uh they'd look at the tone of voice in phone calls uh, a friend of mine 
Alex McMillan from Opaque was showing me uh, a service like that before, um, where you can kind of use, you know, all the new AI ML that's out there. Um, and it's a shout out to Alex if you're watching us today. Uh, miss seeing you all, my friends. We're all stuck in our houses now, but this is still a, a good way to get, communicate with everybody. And um, all right, I'm going to close this poll and see. And share the results. Uh, all right, good. 26% uh, are, and that's actually great to hear. I would actually be curious um, if you and I did not put this into the questions at the end of this, at the end of the webinar. Let us know the 26% that are. Let us know how you're using AI ML, and we will include that in a follow up to all the attendees of this uh, webinar. It'd be great to see how everyone is using these new tools. Uh, and this new technology going forward. So let me hide these results. Um, and so we talked a lot about how we're currently doing the real-time traffic anomaly detection. And I wanna talk about current and future research and development. So this is something obviously we started five, six years ago. And then last year, we had a great idea. Um, and the idea was to work with other great people. And, and a quarter two of 2019, our parent company, Tiggy, uh, formed Tiggy New York, and that's incorporated. And it was, uh, it was formed and headquartered. And it's now it's, it's based in Amherst, New York. We have an office up there. And we're working with the State University of New York, University at Buffalo. And uh, predominantly, we're working in all of our liaisons with the uh, Center for Industrial Effectiveness. And uh, Gary Simon there has been cru uh, really crucial with helping us and orchestrate all the work that we're doing there with the Department of Computer Science and Engineering. And what we're doing there is Rob and his group here and with the Department of Computer Science and Engineering at the State University of Buffalo is we are actually now coming up with new ways to actually use data, right? Stuff that's groundbreaking. And when you think about it in the industry, right? And you talk to anybody about AI ML, right? You need three things, right? And this is not this is not something that's a surprise. I think everybody on the phone call can, can say what the three things are. Uh, number one, you need a lot of data, right? Because you can't make decisions and, and test data without with, and test algorithms without sending it data. And you need a constant live data. If you have fabricated data, right? If you have false data, it's really easy to expect the results because you're kind of making data to fit your model. But when you have a lot of real-time data, right, you can really do some great things with it. So that's one thing that Constellix and DNS Me Easy have is a lot of data, right? We have that. We have 100 billion queries a day. We got over a billion measurements and performance and monitoring, and we can make these and we can send it data and we can practice and we can see what's going on, right? Number two, you need a lot and lot of computing power, right? So one thing I talked about early on, what separates DNS Made Easy and Constellux from all the other players in the industry? We actually own our own infrastructure, right? We have power. We don't just put one or two VPS services up that some of our competitors do. We have nodes and nodes and, and full bare bone metal systems at every single pop. We own our own routers. Um, everything at this point is all Juniper routers going forward. We own our own switches. Um, we own everything from layer one to layer seven. And we have tons of computing power and we have tons of resources, right? Number three, you need smart people, right? Without smart people, none of it's going to work. So Rob, like we'll say, Rob's a very smart guy. You know, he, um, he's helping um, uh, tailor all this. But then we also got more smart people at the University of Buffalo, right? We have professors and we have students working together to try to conquer this, this, this challenge of using all this data, right? Now, we're already, we consider ourselves the leader of making reactive DNS decisions. Hey, my site's down, move my traffic somewhere else, right? Or hey, it's faster on my Sprint cell phone to access an Amazon cloud right now, but on a Verizon cell phone, it's faster to use Google or Fastly or Akamai, right? And we can make those decisions in real time, but it's all reactive, right? So what we wanna do and what we're working on right now, now that we're the first ones to even 
offer this real-time traffic anomaly detection is to use the recurrent neural networks to detect anomalies at higher dimensions of data, right? Higher, D, higher DNS query anomalies, right? Per record, what, we're, what record is leaving its bounds? We're using RUM data, BGP routes, SNMP data, all this other stuff, right? If you all thought about it last June, there was this huge outage on the internet, right? Cloudflare was down and Amazon had an issue and Microsoft, everyone was down. It was all caused by something really small, which really was a BGP route leak. Right. It was done out of a, a BGP route optimizer out of somewhere uh, in I think they're Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Right. And it was done. It was pushed through a network because a small BGP route was 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 well, not many BGP routes were pushed out that were more uh, specific than the overall announcements that were done with the, the, the true owners of that network. And what caused it to happen is a cascading effect of outages right? Um, all traffic started going to one spot, speeds went down, right? So we already have, we own our own routing infrastructure, we have route tables, we have tons of routing feeds. So wouldn't it be great to actually make a decision on your DNS before your DNS went down? You see the BGP route change, let's change the DNS before it happens, right? We're the only provider in the industry right now that's even anywhere close to that sort of idea, right? Because we're the only ones that are now five, six years down this roadmap of figuring out how to make that decision, right? We're actually, we're now showing you how we could uh, um, uh, detect anomalies in your traffic. And now we're gonna use the stuff that we're working with the University of Buffalo to gather more insights and put that stuff in. Rob, do you want to say anything a little more about that, about some of maybe some of the models they're working on there? Um, sure. I mean, we're right now we're working with Buffalo. Initially, we're starting off just looking at higher dimensional fits that are a little harder to do with the Fourier Arima model. Um, and we're using these uh, long term, long short term memory mo uh, neural networks, which are recurrent neural nets. Um, the goal is that, you know, we'll start to detect patterns that occur, as, as Steve had pointed out, just before there's some sort of an attack or before something happens, and then we can make decisions just slightly before those things happen. Um, so it's, it's really exciting. It's, uh, it's cool stuff. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, from about 20 years in the industry, this is really, I'll say, it's kind of, you know, you're doing DNS every single day, it gets a little mundane and boring but to do stuff that's leading in the industry is exciting for me right it makes me want to like think about okay what can we do next um all the things we want to doing as if you notice we see those reports your 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 domain is is exceeding or, or below expected traffic levels we're automatically going to capture dns uh packets and send them back to you um and so we're going to send this right over to you right away and then we're also going to be working on analyzing DNS vectors and, and faster fits. Right now, we do 30 sec, 30 minute fits. We want to be doing that a little bit faster to do that. And part of that, it's actually being able to process that at, at a rate that the neural net can do it faster. And, and different models, and this is way outside my pay grade or my understanding. That's why you got to have other people. So, Rob, explain real quickly different algorithms. They could, they could actually do that fit at a faster speed. That's my understanding, correct? Well, so with neural nets, we we, we believe that um, we can do sort of a fit on the neural network and then use it for a longer period of time. With the current error correction models, what we try to do is every every time period, we want to refit the data and then just use the projections for one time period out. Um, but with the neural nets, we think we can do that for a longer period of time. Um, in that case, the the processing becomes very fast. So once you fit the neural network, shoving data through it, uh, is very fast, um, and then we'll be able to process a lot more data, um, you know, a lot, at a higher frequency. So instead of doing it every 30 minutes, maybe every 30 seconds or 10 seconds, we can be processing data to see, um, you know, what the changes are. That'll also depend on the size of the number of queries that people are getting. Um, if there's too few queries, obviously, it doesn't make sense to do a fit every 10 seconds. But but based on the number, you know, reasonable number of queries. Um, and, and um, you know, the algorithm, we could probably make it happen a lot faster. Exactly. And that's one thing you brought up a good point, Rob. So in our, uh, our, our current, uh, let me go page, whoop, whoop, whoop. in our current modeling um, and how we do it, we allow you to choose a model and a, and a fit done on a world level on a region level or a per pop level where we have our name servers. And for really about 95% or more of our server, of our users, 
we expect it to be at the world level is really the most beneficial to them. Because unless you have so many billions of queries a day, and I'm talking billions and billions, and we have some users that do get you know five to 10 billion queries a day. Uh, unless you're at that level, something at the region level or per pop level, uh, would it, per pop would never really make set much sense. Um, the per region level maybe, but really it's the world level where you're seeing a big spike or not a big spike where then you can go and drill down and see where those queries are coming from. But it's hard to know where your users are at any particular level. Don't you agree? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so also it depends a little bit on how smooth your, your queries are. If you're getting, you know, pretty consistently the same number of queries over a period of time, um, you know, you could maybe go down to region. But for most people, I think world is probably going to make the most sense. And fortunately for you guys, that's also the cheapest. Yes. Yeah. So based upon the modeling, that does take computing power to do every single fit. So um, uh, each fit does have a, some, a lot of resources to actually do that fit. So the billing is based upon how many fits you're actually doing per month. Right. And so uh, I think it's about I think we got the pricing down at the world level. Uh, a little about a dollar, dollar and a half a day. I think it's like forty-five, fifty dollars a month. Um, I think that's where we're, we're starting out with the pricing right there to try to get that in, so we can get as many people on this platform as possible. Which you think about it, uh, security-wise, is a, is a, it's a, it's it's a no-brainer to have all that analytics going into you. Um, and so, if you did do additional fits, there would be additional costs to that. So, um, but definitely. Uh, to get the, the true pricing, and every account could have different pricing. Uh, corporate users in DNS Meet Easy do get everything at a, a slightly lower fee. Um, Constalix has a, a, a different pricing models as well, based upon how large of a user you are. The more in Constalix, obviously, we've got, I don't want to go through, deal into this too much here. The more you use, the cheaper everything gets, right? Because um, we do uh, that economy of scale um, that we do with everything. So, um, what I want to go into next is we're going to be working on those faster fits, individual record limits, and then we're going to do immediate awareness of those misconfigurations you'll have. So you're going to notice when you make that misconfiguration on your server, uh, by the time you get up from your desk, your, your pager is going off, right? Boom, I made a mistake. Sit back down and fix your DNS mistake uh, or fix that server. You'll know that almost immediately. And that's kind of where we want to get into with the future of research and development. Um, so it's exciting times going forward. So with that part, we're up to webinar. I got a few minutes left. I know we got some questions and answers. So I do have a whole bunch in here and I've been trying to click through them real quickly. Um, uh, okay, your example email shows anomaly as a drop of DNS queries below uh, an expected range. And uh, what risk is drop below or predicted range indicate? Okay, so dropping below a predicted range could be for a lot of different reasons. Um, one of them could be for uh, servers that are down. You're no longer making any internal queries to your internal, uh, your namespace, right? Um, or it could be, uh, you know what? No one's hitting your website anymore, right? Your web server's down. Um, or it could be your, you know, you've done a, mis, a misconfiguration uh, in your DNS, right? Sometimes people do C names to another name, right? Or they do one domain name to another domain name to another domain name. So now this one is no longer pointing to your domain, right? And the records that were going to your domain, users that were using your service made a mistake and now those queries have just plummeted, right? So a user who is, if you're a CDN provider, for instance, you did a, a C name, uh, people have C names to your names, and now that one particular record is dropped. So you know he made a mistake or he left your service, right? Sometimes people leave services and then a, a, a queries can go down. So there's several use cases um, just in for that um, when things go down. Um, do we have DDoS protection from the ISP? So we do DNS services, authoritative DNS services, because we can alert you on your DNS traffic, which is really the first piece that's queried about anything that's going through you. We're not a filter of your traffic going through our services in order to get into your particular services. Um, so uh, I got one, but uh, anything with like screenshots or anything like that. A lot of people asking some technical support questions. Um, just about their particular accounts. I'll make sure our whole support team who is now working from home um, can be more than happy to answer them. 
Uh, is there any way to aggregate the world level but see queries on the region or pop level? That's a good question, Rob. So they want to know, is there a way to aggregate at the world level but see queries at the region or pop level? And the answer to that is yes. So you do have we do do the real-time traffic anomaly detection, the RTATAD. Um, we do the RTAD at the world level. And when you do get that email, you're going get, to get at the bottom of it. Uh, I don't know if I show it in the, the previous ones or not. Um, uh, let me go back here. Um, I'm going to stop doing that. Uh, I'm not going to go anywhere. Um, let me see if I show that. No, I don't have it in the email. I do apologize. In the email is a link to your analytics. When you go to your analytics, you automatically can filter down on region and per pop. So we automatically give you that. So even if we're doing the real-time traffic anomaly detection at the world level um, through Rob's interface that he helped architect, you immediately can see the per region traffic and you can see the per pop traffic. And you can quickly identify where that is and you go right in to say, okay, what are those actual queries I'm missing or now I'm getting? Um, so we give you all those analytics as this. Um, one, one little point of clarification. So if you're aggregating at the world level for your anomaly detection, what it's doing is it's taking all the, all the pops and combining all the data together and it's doing a fit based on those counts. Your data underlying that is still available, whether you use anomaly detection or not. So if you go to the analytics um, site, for example, for your account, you can click on, a, on an individual domain and you can see all the time series of queries for that domain. Um, or you can go into the RTS from either DNS Made Easy or Constellix and you can also see those queries at a more detailed level. So the data will be there. But if you do anomaly detection at the world level, we're going to fit on the aggregate of that data. So you won't see individual fits at each location, for example. Right. Okay. That's that's a good that's 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 important to know. Yeah. The fit is going to be done at the world level. Uh, but you can still look at your traffic overall on a per region or a per pop level, and then you can see where it, it, it correlates with the, the fit that was done at the world level. Um, but yeah, but your troubleshooting is done at that. Um, is there a feature to pipeline to auto initiate a process based on anomalies to, to mitigate a problem? And the answer to that is yes. That is what our end goal is to be uh, very soon, right? Uh, you know, based upon the work we're doing with the University of Buffalo, right? Based upon the data we're seeing, we can almost predict an DDoS attack before it happens, right? Uh, it's like if you were to go back in June and look at that, uh, the, what happened uh, when, when, when Cloudflare and everyone was down, is it's easy to see, okay, look at that BGP routes that were pushed through. That's the reason why the traffic was lost, right? Hindsight is always 2020. Or if you got bad vision, it's 2030. But um, it's always really, really fast, right? And it's always really accurate to say, oh, yeah, I see that. But to pick out those five or six pieces of information out of 150 billion, that's hard, right? And that's why you need, you know, AI ML to do that. And so what we want to do uh, very soon is we're the only ones now to give you these uh, detections. We're going to start learning more patterns and we're going to start putting these extra patterns that we're working on to say, hey, there's a 96 percent chance you're going to go under DDoS attack. Let's move your traffic to this other provider. Right. You're usually optimized and you can have these are my best CDNs that I want to use when it's during normal traffic patterns. I want to go the fastest for my networks, fastest for my providers, fastest for my customers. Right. Uh, but. If there's a chance of a DDoS attack, put my traffic here, right? Save costs, go to someone else that you know that can fight that attack for you. Turn on something else, activate something else, right? That's where we're going inside, you know, Tiggy, New York, um, working with our group here, working with the University of Buffalo. So that's where our end goal is, right? We're going to be the leaders in the industry to make proactive DNS decisions and not reactive DNS decisions. Uh, and that's kind of uh, where we want to go. And if I could add one thing, um, you know, for example, in our RUM ITO, you know, we offer something where we're actually changing traffic based on conditions. So we're already doing some of that with heuristics. Now we're going to take that and apply that up to a broader set of your data to make other types of decisions as well. Yep, 100%. I'm looking at one last question here. 
Uh, I got a bunch of questions. I apologize. Uh, our team will go through and answer all of them as soon as we go through here. Uh, I'm trying to like, get through. I know I'm, I'm at my time. Is there a way to have our internal DNS server point you, point your traffic to you to stop the malicious traffic? And I think they mean to detect the traffic. And we don't have anything at this time, but there's probably be something that we're going to be building in the near future. Um, right, Rob? But we could. They could actually send us their DNS traffic, even if it's done on their own servers, and we could put it through our anomaly detection, uh, and then we can aggregate that. That's probably something we could develop for them. Yeah, I imagine we could. Yeah, that's uh, uh, that's 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 going to be our next webinar. No, it's not. Um, but it's, that's something we could probably do, and we'll work forward to that. And you know what? I, I hit my hour limit, and I know I'm. Uh, uh, we're gonna all going to turn into pumpkins soon. So with that being said, after this. Um, after this, there's a survey. And on this survey, there's some uh, important questions. And for all you DNS, Venezia, and Constellix clients out there, there's one question that says, do you want real-time traffic anomaly turned on for free for your domain at the world aggregate level for four months, right? All you gotta do is click on yes. Now it's only the first 500 of you. Uh, uh, and so and if, it's, if we get more than 500, we're gonna have to do uh, a pick. But all you have to do is click yes. And then you will have a support technician reach out to you, uh, make sure it's turned on. They'll assign the service credits if you're in Constellix. Uh, if you're in DNS Made Easy, they will add it to your account and we'll keep track of it for you. Um, and then there's other questions in there as well. So please feel free to answer those questions. Let us know how we can benefit you at any step of the way. Uh, once again, we do thank you for, I think most of you are on DNS meetings or Constellix already, right? Our job is to provide value to you, all right? And if we're not taking stress off your plate, we're not providing you value added services, if we're not taking something that makes your life better, we're not doing our job. And so we value that, we enjoy it. Uh, I'm coming from an engineering background. Rob, you can tell, is a very engineering focused. Our whole group is engineering focused, right? And we wanna provide the best value added services for you. So. Please answer those survey questions. Reach out to us if there's anything we can provide. You know, once again, thank you very much. Uh, you give me an hour of your time, and that is more than we can all ask for. I hope you guys are all staying safe. Uh, you're, you're, you're staying healthy. And I look forward to the time again where we can all get together and see each other personally. But until that time, like I said, we do have another webinar next week. Uh, I look forward to seeing all of you on that. Um, everyone, please stay safe and secure during this time. Uh, we love you all, and we will talk to you all soon. Uh, so when I close this webinar, you're going to get a survey to pop up. And everyone, take care. Bye-bye.